Chafing Armor Podcast mini series Descent into the Demon Webs, Episode 17 Four Priestesses and a Funeral. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I am your diabolical dungeon master, Michael Corley. You can support us on Patreon. Go to Patreon slash Chafing Armor. Now, to the show. When we last left our players, they are almost to the Castle of Loth. They have traveled into the demon webs, through the Underdark, through unimaginable dangers and horrors only to find their way blocked by not one, not two, not three, but four handmaidens of Loth. They are all floating above you. Uh, They do have dark wings, bat-like wings. Uh, Corvus, you remember seeing Penton's uh, dragon wings that were beautiful and blue-scaled and resplendent. These seem to absorb the light. Even a bat has a sort of beauty to its wings. These are just darkness personified. Each one is looking down at you all with disdain in their eyes uh, as they look at you. And the uh, leader, you suspect... Uh, says to you, Greetings. I am Zareff. Welcome. Welcome to the Handmaidens of Loth. We bring you a slow and torturous death. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Okay. Gronk wants to do an intimidation while we're doing that. I love it. Uh, Intimidate is an action. So um, that will... Where I'm going to do one group roll for them. They get a, a 17. Uh, so starting with Gronk, what did you get? 24. Nice. For Gronk and for Corvus? Uh, 24 as well. 24. I'm assuming that you have a higher dexterity. Um, and Eleonora? 19. High dexterity. 19. That's really low for you. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, also Gan, what did you get? Uh, whopping nine. Nine! Coming in hot! Coming in hot! Uh, just really quickly, all four of them are up just at the area where the intense heat would start to become uncomfortable for all of you. It does not seem to be affecting them. Uh, they are all looking down on you. They are all flying. All of them have at least one flaming whip, uh, not a cat o' nine tails, um, and one of those whips is currently wrapped around your forearm, Gronk. Uh, that is by the athletic looking one. Uh, let me just run through real quick. There is one that is very tall, very thin, uh, with silver armor and spider motifs. Then there is a very small one with wild hair. Uh, whose face almost seems to glow. Uh, there's a very athletic one with shaved head and scars uh, all throughout her cheeks. And then finally, the incredibly ancient crone-like one who has been speaking to you. Uh, and you you feel like you've met her before in the Underdark Gan. Uh, like she's just... She embodies everything that you hate about Drow society. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if you If you take my meaning... Uh, but she did not get the first initiative. That is Corvus. Corvus, as I, if I remember, you are currently a bird, are you not? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you. So you are flying. You are just under the uh, intolerable area, which means you are just a little lower than them, uh, but not by much. Um, you are about. I'm sure, they think everybody is lower than them. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're not wrong. Truth. What would you real, like to do? A real child maiden mother crone going on here. Was that on purpose? Uh, maybe. There's four of them, but maybe. We kind of don't have time for this. We really don't. But also, we kind of can't really fight up here. So Corvus is just going to um, dive to the ground or to the mountain, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, 
pretty sure that won't bring them down, but he wants to go towards the mountain, but the other side where the castle is. So like at an angle. So, so close. Oh, to yeah. You, you are. You actually, uh, as Gronk was, uh, Gronk, you're the furthest ahead. You have come over the, just over the ridge, Gronk, when, when this happened. Uh, and even as you, like, of course, look up at them and look back down, you can now see the entire castle. There is a huge, endless plane of spider webs, even more dense than anything you've seen so far. And indeed, there is an incredibly huge central tower. There's sort of some lower spires kind of clustered at the bottom, but there's a huge upper tower, and below it are four, not eight, but four uh, spider legs that move with a mechanical purpose as it boom, boom, goes across the plains. Uh, it is enormous. I mean, it is the size easily of an entire city, uh, this one tower structure. Uh, but it is in view now fully. Uh, having said that, uh, again, it's your turn, Corvus. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to basically just dive down to where uh, Gronk is. There's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no use in fighting them up here. It's just none. So, yeah. Okay. And that'll basically have to be my turn. Uh, if you're if you're taking your full movement to do that, are you going to change shape at all? Or are you going uh, to stay bo- buoyed? Hmm. I'll stay. I'll stay buoyed for 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 now. Okay. And that will bring it to Gronk. Gronk, there is a. Um, uh, rapidly heating um, uh, flame whip around your left forearm. Um, I would like you to make a fortitude saving throw, please, Gronk. Okay. Which uh, of the hags or maidens is the whip from? Uh, the whip is from the um, uh, athletic one. Uh, she is one of the two that has two whips. Uh, and one of them is around your wrist, uh, the one with the shaved head. Okay, uh, that is a twenty-two. Okay, uh, so you successfully succeed in um, avoiding damage at the moment. However, your metal is rapidly heating up, uh, almost like a I don't know, like a heat metal spell like is about to take metal place. Spell. Uh, okay. But it actually it actually has not taken place yet because of your fortitude save. Now, is it a, um, a an actual magic construct whip where it doesn't have a physical form, or um, is it they're, ju- they're, a whip that has fire over it? It's hard for you to say, uh, but there is you, you are being held by it, so it is there's something physical about it, whether or not it's a flame made solid or whether or not there's a whip that's been turned into that's been you know set fire uh there is absolutely physicality to this uh it's not just you know smoke that's holding you uh there is something physical there okay so um he is going to uh look at them uh and i'm going to roll intimidation uh, mm-hmm. and he is going to say we have an audience with your mistress. To get in our way will be death. Be gone. I love this. I love this because, you know, if you're, if you were intimidating them to like, hey, back off, we're so powerful, you need to back off. But what you're trying to do is kind of, it's almost like a deception. He's, uh, yeah, he's it, he's bluffing, intimidating that he they have a audience with Loth herself. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, I would love to see that uh, check, please. All right, and that is a non-natural twenty. Non-natural twenty. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Not quite. Uh, yeah, you did need to get a little higher just to outright win. Uh, what I will say 
is that the 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 eldest of the handmaidens kind of tilts her head at you slightly. Really? Well, then, surely you would let me probe your mind. I will probe your mind with my spear if you interfere <laughs> with this task. <laughs> Be gone before I kill you outright. Okay. Uh, so unfortunately, it, it just it isn't high enough to succeed, and right. you needed you needed really high to bluff the the handmaidens of Loth. Uh, I, I love it. I love it, and I will uh, say that you will get advantage on your next attack. Uh, but that is that is your attack. Do you want to? I, I will also allow you to attempt to disengage from this whip if you so choose uh, as a almost like a bonus action no he's gonna grab hold of it and oh, i love it i love it and, uh, just and take the take the uh slack out of it and, okay and you know basically your father's finger he's pointing at you're gonna pay you're gonna pay in a major way uh, so we're we're getting a little loosey goosey with the rules here, but what I would like is just a straight strength check from you. Yo, <laughs> yo, my name is Gronk, and I'm here to say I'm gonna kick your ass in a major way. Mm-hmm, 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 okay. mm-hmm. So, um, that is a twenty-seven. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the priestess, um, uh, Verania, uh, just. Like descends ten feet towards you, and there is surprise in her eyes. Uh, also, a great deal of hatred and anger. Uh, but like you pull her down towards you, your um, forearm is beginning to smoke now. But uh, yeah, you will you will have advantage on your next attack against them, uh, and that will move it to Eleonora. It's a filthy habit. Your arm should give it up. <laughs> uh, tag team, the one he just pulled down, gonna jump straight into attacking her. Uh, they- yeah, uh, this would. I, I am absolutely going to give this a flank. So uh, you will uh, get flanking against uh, this against this person. Uh, so that is a uh, plus two uh, for your attack. Cool. So first one, let's see. That is going to be, let's see, uh, 26. That will hit. Perfect. All right. Let me get the dice out. Uh, Of the freezer? (laughs) (laughs) No, I I have like nine piles of dice in front of me and I got to get my fours out. Uh, One, two... He has a problem, listeners. <laughs> they all do. I can Squid stop anytime, anytime I want. Let's see. I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so pretty. I can't help they, it. They are very pretty. Put oh. that on the floor. All right, let's see. <sighs> Four and then uh, <sighs> so twenty four points of damage outright. Then the fire damage on top of that is fourteen, so thirty eight for the base damage. And then let's see what the uh, let's see. Okay, uh, so they will take half damage for all fire damage. Okay, so then uh, that would be seven points of damage fire. So. Um, what did I say? 24 plus 7? Mm-hmm. Alright. Uh, then that is going to be <laughs> uh, Searing Light, 7d8 Radiant Damage, and oh, uh, damn. 7d6 to Undead. It's a Fortitude save, takes half. Okay, it is not, um, it is not Undead. Alright, let's get the dice out. Uh, but it rolled a 2 for its fortitude save, so it will take full damage. <laughs> Clovis winces. Not again. Five, <laughs> six, 
seven. Do okay. I have to roll anything? Because that might Eight. hurt. Uh, I would. I just need you to make a reflex saving throw. Okay. Ten. Stupid drow eyes. Nah, that's enough. Uh, you Two. you you are not happy right now that you're not uh, injured. Nine. Why am I ever happy? <laughs> <laughs> if you were happy, you wouldn't be on this quest. That's my secret. That. I'm always oh. surly. That's right. <laughs> So that is going to be 38 points of damage, uh, radiant damage. Dang. So I think that's 70 points of damage. And she In the first attack. screams as, as this searing light. It's like a tiny supernova opens up right in front of her. And uh, you all see uh, all of her exposed skin is just seared by this light. Even though she is comfortably sitting up in that in that fire zone up above y'all um, she cannot tolerate this light of, of fey magic as it burns her skin uh, she <laughs> uh, she is very unhappy uh, in fact I need her to make a roll nope she she maintains her hold on you Gronk should have put uh, the but- SPF 110 plus on love <laughs> that's that's what she should have done. Uh, but yes, that's your first attack. Oh yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, next one is going to be uh, what's sixteen plus sixteen? Uh, thirty-two. Thirty. So thirty-two to hit. Um, that will hit. <laughs> then let's get these out. Boom. And that fell on the floor. <sighs> All right. Every, every dice that falls on the floor goes into the freezer now. Eight. <laughs> Twelve. She just sits over her freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that falls down just goes directly in. <laughs> so 24 for the base damage, and then the fire damage is... Uh, that'll be 16. Half. And then halved would be, uh, 8. Yeah. Eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then spell, let's see. What and I apologize, the, what was the, the base damage? Oh. After, before the... 24? Yeah, 24. Gotcha. Then death ray! Yay. Okay. Uh... 5d6 um, um, trying to read the handwriting uh, oh, not wielding a cat of nine tails she's got a small <laughs> beholder on the end of a stick hey it's made of the sinew of a beholder so it's well there we go <laughs> that makes a lot of sense <laughs> alright let's see so um, 60 feet radius uh, 5d6 Plus half a level, um, critical, 1920, um, see, is it constitution save? I think that's what I have. Yes. I would imagine. Yeah. Eventually again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. one. Oh, no. <laughs> Not save. All right, then let's see. So, d6. All right. Uh, that is going to be 24 points of damage. Let's see. Yeah, 5d6, so 24. Is that what I just said? 24 points of damage? Yeah. Eleonora of the Feywild, <laughs> tell me how you dispatch this uh, handmaiden of Loth. Seeing someone who purposely devouts themselves to Loth, like she devoted herself to her queen and fills her with so much rage... That when she sees Gronk just yank her down, she throws out her whip and just thrashes her with the radiant damage. And then with rage, shoots out the death ray, causing her to die. And as you burn her, as she falls, you all see her, uh, you know, intense but attractive drow form shift and change and melt and she becomes this 
oozing stalk-like thing. It, it almost reminds you, all of you have encountered ropers at one point. Uh, you specifically, Corvus, uh, have uh, fought a, um, a blinded roper uh, during your adventures. Uh, this resembles a roper if it was made of melting wax. It's yellow, has a single giant eye in the center as it splatters to the ground and makes a like a, a gurgling sound. And just dissipates and begins actually begins to bubble because of the sheer heat of where y'all are. But but now it's their turn. Um <laughs> And they are not uh, not terribly happy. Uh, obviously, uh, Gronk, uh, you are no longer um, restrained by this uh, flaming whip, which quickly becomes just a normal whip, by the way. Um, it is their turn. And first is the uh, ancient woman. And she just floats down and she looks at you Eleonora, and she holds out a hand and you hear a booming, echoing voice sear through your mind and it says, You will serve Loth! And I need you to save against Dominate Person. Oh. Uh, <sighs> that is, as you would imagine, a uh, willpower saving throw. Me next! Oh. Me next! <laughs> that is going to be a 19. 19. Um, uh, that is successful. So oh. <laughs> there, there is a moment where uh, you feel your will slipping away, and it just would be so easy to give in and just to stop and just obey her. And then you remember the face of your queen. And would you like to say anything? How dare you you think oh you bitch <laughs> give it up everyone come on come on give it up that was fantastic <laughs> I, I love it I love it yeah she's uh, just so that put me in, angry <laughs> at the thought that, of that. That, that that was that was some Ellen Ripley shit that was <laughs> it was great I, I that was it. some get away from her you Bitch. Like, that was fantastic. Well done, Riley. That was... I've got to give it up. That was some... That's some good roleplay. Mm -hmm. uh, as as she... Her hand is first up, then it comes down and it strikes the ground. There is a burst of flame that comes outward and then comes back in. And I need everyone to make a... Uh, fortitude saving throw. Please let me know what you go, what you get. Uh, 27 for Gan. Okay, Corvus. 25. Okay. 34 for Eleonora. Gotcha. 21 for Gronk. <laughs> okay, so that is uh, saved for half. So I'm just going to take uh, five of these and double them. It's 10, so 17. Uh, 17 times 2 is 34. Yes. yes. Yeah, well, actually, uh, you all saved, so it's 17. Um, you all literally feel the moisture being drained out of your body. Uh, this type of spell is meant to affect, like, plants, but it's not. It's affecting you. And it is literally drawing out every ounce of moisture from you. And only your incredible strength and resistances. Um, by the way, your dungeon master is forgetting to remind you all of something uh, about effects of Loth. Wink, wink, wink. We have uh, advantage on fortitude saving throws and advantage against servants of Loth. So would that mean it's quartered? Or um... No, it would just it meant it would have meant you would have gotten to have um, yeah roll roll twice to save uh, that that would have been the advantage. Um, but since you all saved, it doesn't matter. Just I just want to throw that out there. Um, and again, this is my broken system that will not be going when we when we shift into Pathfinder. 
um, she is going to cast uh, one final spell uh, as she looks up at all of you and perhaps sees that it is um, not uh, it was not as effective as she would have liked um, she raises up a finger and she points it at you Gronk and I need you to make a willpower saving throw um, oh, no. Instead of that, Gronk, okay. as a uh, reaction, uh, casts Counterspell with his spear. I love it. How does that work? Uh, three times per day per long rest, a user may cast Counterspell as a reaction per fifth level. Mm. I love it. I love it. Um uh, I have never actually had Counterspell cast in one of my games, uh, so I don't actually know how it works. <laughs> uh, the DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. So whatever the spell level plus 10 is what I would have to be. Yeah, so it would be... If the creature casting the spell is third level or lower, the spell fails automatically and has no effect. It's definitely not third level or lower. Uh, so this is a this is a fifth level spell. So that okay. would be a twenty. But remember, you do have advantage. Okay. And so, first one is a twenty. The second one is a twenty-six. Twenty-six. Now, neither of those were natural, were they? No. Okay. Just checking. Uh, I have I have my own little rules. Um, so, uh, you recognize this spell, um, as she casts it, she points a finger at you and, uh, you realize as she begins that, that quick chant of the drow, uh, that she was trying to cast feeble mind on you that would have reduced your intelligence to one. <laughs> Uh, so describe to me as this as this terrifying spell of robbing you of literal intelligence comes towards you. How do you counter spell using the power of your god? As the whip falls from the fallen uh, maiden off of his arm, he and sees he sees the uh, older maiden getting ready to cast a spell. He lifts the spear and points at her and goes, your death comes soon. And the golden glow of St. Cuthbert acts as a shield and the glow goes forth, dampening all of her intentions as she feels her death drawing near. I freaking love it. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, she is not the last one. There are still two more. The um, chaotic little one uh, cackles with uh, just just almost childlike glee. Um, oh, this one's she... feral. Great. <laughs> and she is coming for you, uh, Corvus. And she says, pluck out its Feathers, we shall eat well tonight. Uh, and uh, she releases one hand, and uh, un to, to literally no one's surprise, uh, there is a spider uh, on that hand. But this, there's something wrong about the spider as it's coming flying towards you. She is also flinging her whip towards you as well. So the first attack is the whip attack. And that is a non-natural 20. Uh, Defender wins, right? So yeah. Yes, in our game. So you yeah. barely avoid this flaming whip. Uh, she, With her second attack, she sends forward uh, this spider. Um, it is going to try and bite you. That is not even close because it rolled a six. Uh, so even with its bonus... Uh, what you see as the spider comes toward, you are ready for the mandibles of the spider to try to pierce your uh, leather armor. Uh, and what you see is that the head of the spider, it, it is essentially a tiny drider. Uh, and its 
its head and body are that of uh, just just a just a human, just a human. And y- you like it, in your little combat sense, you get the feeling that like this is a human that offended her indeterminate time ago and has been turned into this thing. And it is its eyes are crazed and it is just <laughs> it's trying to bite you but it cannot uh, pierce your hide. However, she has uh, one more attack, uh, and she does this this kind of like zoop up into the air and comes flying towards you, both of her uh, fingers outstretched and her uh, nails turn into long, lethal claws as she scratches she has at two her. two fingers? Uh, no, I, I said that badly, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, and that will be a 29. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> uh, so she is going to rake your face with her uh, claws. Uh, that is going to be uh, 26 points of slashing damage as she rakes across your face. Um, you do need to save versus poison. I believe you have something versus that. You are immune. Uh, you feel the, the heat of the of Loth's poison course, but you are also sorry. Loth's wait, creature. no, sorry, I'm not immune. It's safe for half. Ah, uh, okay. Then uh, please way. save. Uh, so if you if you save, um, yeah. Uh, so even if you fail, you save for half. But um, ooh, okay. Um, twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you take no damage. Um. But you do take 26 points as you, you feel the hot sting of these, these warm claws across your face. Um, and there is one final one. Uh, she, uh, the tall, imposing one with silvery armor, pulls up uh, a long sword and dives to the ground. She strikes it into the ground and you and shoves it down into the ground and y'all feel this and suddenly gravity is reversed where you are and something is trying to fling you all up into the air now uh, some of you can fly I believe Um, and so uh, for those of you who can fly this isn't simply that that gravity is reversed like something is actively trying to push you up so uh those of you who can fly i would like you all to make a reflex saving throw at advantage everyone who can't fly i would just like you to make a reflex saving throw and that is to grab hold of something on the ground to hold on well corvus has in a spider climb so he ain't going anywhere oh well if he has spider climb then he can whoop to the ground, yes. But I still would like you to make a reflex saving throw at advantage and okay. because you still have to touch the ground uh, because something is trying to pull you up before you can touch it. Well, I was it. already on the ground, so... That's I, true. I'll do it. Yeah, but I, I still would like you to make it at advantage. Because just, just in case. Oh, no. Reflex. Mm, um. You're worse. <laughs> so, Corvus and uh, Gronk, uh, Gronk... I'm sorry, Gan. What did y'all get? With advantage. Um, I got a 26. Okay, so you're fine. So I just turn upside down. <laughs> <laughs> 35. 35, okay. Um, and uh, Gronk. Gronk rolled an 18 twice. No, oh, uh, but that is enough. You, you, what are, what are you grabbing onto on the ground? Uh, to hold he on? jams the uh, butt of the spear into the webbing, uh, rocks and everything that's makes up the plane before him and mm-hmm. just uses it as, as a lever to hold himself down. Okay. And uh, Eleonora? Uh, 22. 22. Uh, yeah, you, you you definitely hang on. And how are you hanging on to the ground? Uh, she flings her whip out and wraps it around uh, a rock or something and uses her hands to kind of like uh, rock climbing to find the little holes and just mount herself against the floor. I love it. I love it. Um, She then takes the sword and twists one more time. And within 
30 feet of her, every spider web catches fire. Uh, and so I need uh, every non-flying person uh, to make one more reflex saving throw. Uh, that will be, of course, um, uh, Gronk and uh, Eleonora. <laughs> That's a 23. Okay. That's a 25. <laughs> uh, so you both are able to avoid uh, these as, as suddenly the whole ground is going. By the way, like uh, you can actually see like the, the melting corpse of their companion fly up into the air. And as it does, it just bursts into flame. Whatever magic was protecting it before is gone. And several smaller objects, you know, rocks and things like that, are flinging themselves up into the air. And anything that's organic is just bursting into flame as it gets uh, into that that zone, as it were. Uh, but that is actually the end of her turn. And that means it's your turn, Gan. Okay. There are three, three priestesses left. The uh, <clears throat> Im tall, imposing one with the armor and the sword in the ground. Uh, the wild-eyed small one who's slashing at uh, Corvus's face, and then the ancient uh, woman. Um, yeah, he's going to go for the leader, um, just because she's Probably like, a good like, you, like you said, the kind of the embodiment of everything that he hates about the giraffe. <laughs> um, uh, would you consider her to be a chaotic outsider? Oh, that's an interesting question. She is technically a demon. Uh, so I don't know if a demon counts as an outsider or not. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm saying yes, she is. She is. And then the, the demons are chaotic, so yes. Um, yeah, yeah, she's definitely okay. chaotic, yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, yeah, he's going to zip over to her and manifest his glaive um, and... Uh, say, um, I think we've spent about enough time on these secretaries. <laughs> and take a swing. Oh, fantastic. That's a 19. Um, that will hit? That's a, well, a natural that's 19. A crit uh, for a plus whatever. So that oh, will be yes. a crit. And that's a triple crit. Um, yeah, I'll just roll. All right, so let me get my calculator out. <laughs> Make it a little easier. Eight times three. Um, uh, first hit does 114 points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't kill her, but uh, it impales her uh, as she rises off the ground, and sc the, the scream that comes out is... <laughs> Uh, undescribable. There, there is no word for it. And your okay. other two attacks? Yeah, yeah and then my other two attacks. Attack. <laughs> um, the second one is um, I rolled an 18. It's 18 plus, so I'm sure that will probably hit. Um, it's uh, 18... Uh, 30. 30 to hit. 30? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that hits. Okay. Not as good of a roll. Uh, that's 26 points of damage. Uh, Gan of the Underdark, how do you dispatch this this ancient handmaiden of law? All right. Well, as you say, uh, she was impaled. So what I'm going to do is basically spin it in a circle um, and just <clears throat> cut a large hole right in her torso. Uh, and there is a moment when you all see the, the smoking heat. And, and there, there's a moment where the castle itself is visible in the hole that you left inside her as she looks <laughs> as she looks up at you as her single uh, her two eyes form into that single eye as she turns into that earwax monster and and actually what she does is she voop, flies up into the <laughs> um, air as the spell is taking effect because she is no longer flying because she's dead uh, and immediately <laughs> In fact, you even hear her scream because she's still alive enough to feel it as she bursts into flame. <laughs> uh, and it is... Uh, the smell is just terrible. Um, but that will... You you do have one attack left. 
Um, I believe. I guess it would depend on how close I am to the other one. Um, I don't know. Uh, there is... I would definitely say you could try to um, hit the one who has got the sword into the ground because she is very close. Okay. All right. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take that turn. Um... If her sword spell requires concentration, then she will have to roll for it. That is true. Damn, that's another 18 plus 8, so that'll that's 26. And that's to... Um, do recall that that is a touch attack. So it's their touch yeah. AC, not their full AC. Um, well, that will definitely hit. And that is uh, 28 points of force damage. 28. Um, yeah. Uh, and she does need to make a concentration check, which she fails with a four. Uh, and so you all feel the, and so you won't need to make a reflex saving throw just to move uh, for the non-flying folks um, as as her spell fails. So that was a really good final hit uh, against her. And that will bring it to Corvus. You have a wild child trying to scratch your eyes out. Hmm. You know, I've been I've been pretty skeezy this whole run so far. So, what I'm about to do next might come off really bad. Hmm. But I there is a reason for it if it works anyway. Um, Corvus is going to grapple her. All right. I mean, she is like to. scratching at your face, so it makes sense. Because Corvus wants to tie her up. Again, I know how I've been sounding this whole time. <laughs> Stop it. Get your heads out of the gutter. You're trying to take her alive? No, I'm just trying to keep her still. He's going to okay. multi-class into Bard. There you go. I'm not. But <laughs> if she's bound, she's prone. She can be good <laughs> Too many jokes. She could be coup de grade. Is that what we're calling Insta it Insta kill. Well, you guys have fun with the rest of the campaign. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um. All right. That's a nat twenty. Yeah, that will hit. Uh. uh by the way, are you still a bird? Uh. No, I use my reaction to switch to being. Okay. Just checking. Um, yeah, and I will just attempt to tie her up. I'm so glad I invested in use rope. That's 19 plus, so 25. 25. Uh, you are successful. She is now restrained uh, and tied by rope. So. Uh, well, that means she is prone. Mm -hmm. Unable to defend herself, I just slit her throat. Okay, uh, it is not a. Um, it is not a. Um, she can't automatic, defend herself, so. It is not about automatic death, uh, but what it will do is it's an automatic critical. Oh, okay. Well. Well, because otherwise, everybody who fights y'all could just grapple you and then slit your throat, and you'd be dead. <laughs> Why wouldn't they do that? True. Uh, okay. Um, well, if that's the case, pull out my sickle. 44. Ouch. Uh, that's with including the crit? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you slash across her neck. And she's, she's you know, she's trying to move and, and moving wildly, but you still just carve across her neck. And blood is, black blood is, is spilling out as she curses and spits at you uh, and that will bring it to Gronk you are no longer having to hold yourself down uh, there is still the um, wild woman that uh, he has restrained and then there is the um, the tall armored one whose spell has just failed the tall armored one not the ancient one Oh, the ancient one is dead. Okay. Gan, Gan got her good. Oh, tall, thin one. Okay. I see yeah, tall and thin. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, which one is within reach of me? Uh, the the tall one is closer. Okay. I um, went down next to Gronk, though. 
Oh well, then, and then I rescind that. Uh, then yeah. she, the the wild one, is closer. Okay, um, I will. Since he has that one taken care of, uh, I will go for the tall, thin, armored one, and um, just run up and uh, thrust the spear through. And do I'm going to do three spear attacks, and we get advantage on these, right? Uh, no, you don't get advantage. Oh no, you get advantage on your yeah. first attack because of what I said earlier about your right. intimidation. Yes, but just your first attack, you get advantage on that. Okay, that's a twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay, okay. that will second, definitely hit. Second attack is a 24. That will hit. She has a high AC. Like I said, she's wearing armor. Uh, and third attack is a 19, which is a natural 19, which is a crit. So okay. For a total of 34. All right. Those all hit. Okay. And so that is base 8 damage. So, base of so, uh, the spear attack itself does uh, three, two, and three points of damage with uh, eight points of radiant, and eight points of um, holy damage. No, it's just radiant damage, sorry. And uh, each. And then plus his strength. So that is a total of. Sorry, calculator. We have hit that point in our characters and in the game where a calculator is necessary. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Big numbers. Well, you guys have. <laughs> you three have. I'm still able to do my most of my calculations on my fingers and toes, so it's fine. So that is a total of 72 points of damage with the double damage. Okay. From the third attack. Uh, so that's that's his attack against the tall thin one. And what what is your total damage for all three attacks? 72. 72. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you just it, you, you understand armor very well, and you attack her where the armor plates are weakest, and stab and sack and slash uh, with your spear. And uh, she is rising from the ground, uh, turning with her long sword uh, pointed at you. But you have done incredible damage to her, uh, and she says, "Loth will not forgive this," uh, and. That will bring it to Eleonora. Loth may not forgive this, but I swear to you, he won't even be around to worry about that. She brings out her whip to rip her back down. Uh, go for it. All right. Oh, okay. That'll be a 32 to, for the first attack. That will definitely hit. Back out. So 20 points of base damage and then let's get uh, 10 points of fire damage half would be 5 and then the spell that is going to be disintegrate <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that would be a fortitude saving throw for half damage. All right. That is a failure. <laughs> All right. And so one, two, three, four, five. Six. 
Am I reading that right? That it says 30 D6. It's for what? I think it's for dead. disintegration. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, I'm like. I think it's dead. <laughs> well, let's see. I have 30 D6. Give me a second, <laughs> and I can pull it all up. Uh, I mean, the two, lowest you can roll eight, is 30. Ten. <laughs> 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 6, 28, 30 D6s. All right. I'm, I'm going to go and have a shower while this is being calculated. <laughs> three three yeah. hours later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a lot of days. I'll just take a picture and send it in, and I can add it up later. <laughs> It's a lot of dice. All right. Um, At this point, you just roll 1d6 and multiply (laughs) multiply it. (laughs) So, all right, I'll roll 1d6. (laughs) As long as you get, like, over four, this thing's dead. It has to be. (laughs) Four or more. So, that'll be, uh, let's see, four times 30. So, 120 points of damage if I'm just rolling one or I can add up all those little ones but I go with uh, that it one. is very very dead <laughs> tell me how you destroy <laughs> this this horrifying creature after everything that they did seeing people who absolutely choose to follow Loth making those choices she absolutely has no sympathy in her heart wrapping her whip around her thrashing her to the ground and then just dead staring her as she slowly disintegrates and you can see that magic start to seep out of the Kato Nine Tails almost as if she's casting a spell and she just slowly withers and disintegrates into dust and it is terrifying you hear a a tiny tiny tinkles as something uh, clatters to the ground as it as the horrible waxiness melts into nothing um there is still the one Cor- before 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 that happens Corvus would like to just kind of kneel down next to the the bound one and sort of turn her head to the sky and say you're all alone now sister she tries to bite your nose off oh uh so first i'm going to make a little roll here that is a natural 19 with her bonuses so she just slips um she is uh, a shape changer, so. Uh, oh, me too. Yeah. Let's exchange, well, let's exchange stories. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, getting out of a uh, rope is not terribly difficult for her, uh, and she lunges forward. Uh, but that was to escape. That is a natural one. Oops. Uh, here we go. Here we go. See what the first one is. 100, that, 100, uh, 100, 100. Uh, it's a, yeah, I got excited there because I, I was like, wait, no, is that? No, that's just an 11. So she just Aww. misses. Um, but that is her first attack. Uh, I'm going to say her first attack. Well, her second attack. Her first attack was getting out of the thing. Uh, and then she rolls a six. So as she is trying to literally, her face is changing and distorting and fangs growing out. She's trying to... Um, bite your face off, Corvus. How are you avoiding her? You know what? I've gone this far. I'm going to stick to it. Every time she lunges, I just move my head to the side and give <laughs> her a peck on the cheek. <laughs> oh, oh, she is so mad. She is so mad. Injury, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, the European way of greeting somebody. Gronk. Gronk, it's, <laughs> it's, your, it's your turn. You want you to bring, bring this home? <laughs> um, oh, it's my. Okay, we went yep, through that. Right quick. Oh no! Grunk sorry, sorry. No, I apologize. It's Gan's turn. Gan. Sorry, oh, no. I was yeah, thinking. Sorry. I was we looking at G names. I was looking at. <laughs> no, I was. I was looking at Corvus because of his reaction, and then my brain skipped to Corvus. But no, it's Gan's turn. Gotcha. Gan, okay. you want to bring this home? I would like to try. Let's see what we get here. Da, 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 da. Uh, 
26 for the first attack. Uh, that will hit. All right. There we go. That's good. So 31 points for the first attack. That's a 27 for the second attack. She should be dead after this one. We'll see. If my brain math is adding up. 37 points for the second attack. Uh, yeah. Uh, how are you taking out this wild woman? Okay. Um, I'd originally pictured this when she was tied up, so I'll just do it anyway. Um, so, uh, the first hit is going to basically just be, um, a pierce with the end of the halberd and kind of, like, knock her back and down. Um, and then he's just going to walk up and, like, step on her chest and hold the, like, the tip end of the halberd up to um, the side of her head, and he's just going to say, uh, go to sleep, little wild one, and to just jam it into her temple. Mm-hmm. And there's there's a moment where her, her eyes just kind of cross each other, and then they slowly merge together as she turns into that horrifying waxy thing and just melts into the ground as her her scream just melts into as her throat loses cohesion and she is no more shall we go then (sighs) yeah I think we've wasted enough time here you'd think they would listen they never listen big boy they never listen no they don't can't reason with stupid I know. That's why nobody reasons with me. Ha. And yeah, nobody no, jumps just... to defend him. <laughs> <laughs> they all know you. They all know I'm right. <laughs> if he wants to self-deprecate, that's his, that's his decision. Come on, Corvid. You guys don't know. Your characters don't know. But you players know. Corvus is stupid. Uh, he's, <laughs> yes. He means well. But he's kind uh, of <laughs> so you uh, just you... continues off t- continues toward the, the castle okay uh, y'all continue forward you are able to avoid the worst of the heats you actually see as you move forward there's a moment where you think to yourself like did the did the castle notice us because mm-hmm. at a moment it stops and then it Boom! Settles down into the ground. And whether or not that's because of something you did, or whether that's because of something it just does periodically, you do not know. You can hear the sounds of screams coming from the castle. Uh, There is the sounds of machinery, and there is oddly almost the sounds of building of construction, you know, things like that. Something that there is a lot of activity coming from the castle as you move towards it, as you make your way down, down. It almost feels cool down here, even though you know it's not. And as you make your way to the castle, a huge just chitter spreads throughout the valley and all throughout the valley in abyssal for those of you who understand it you hear a chant begin Loth 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 and towards the bottom of the castle A door opens, and in the great distance, still well over a mile and a half away, you see the form of a drider. Beautiful, beautiful woman with the horrifying body of a spider emerge. Speak this yourself. is the. F- <laughs> and this is this is the first time any of you have seen her in person except of course for Corvus though she looked different then 
And yet in the distance, you still recognize her face, the face of the woman who tricked you into a terrible fate. And all of you recognize her instantly. That is the face of Loth, the Spider Queen. And that's where we'll end! Oh my. Shaving Armor, episode Ooh, 17. It's getting to it, people! So close. It's getting we to go. it. So far. So, so close. close. But so far. Yes, indeed. And you know what's really close is our Patreon. <gasps> Dare tell everyone how they can join the Chafing Armor Patreon. Howdy, y'all. We would love for you to come join us on patreon.com slash chafing armor where we have extra content for you. We have upcoming chapters of the novelization of season one. We have artwork. We have extra recordings, all for you, so that you uh, can experience the full depth and uh, relief from the itch of Chafing Armor. And we'd love for you to come join us. I love it. And we would love to have you. We've got so much extra for you there at Chafing Armor. Just look for us under Patreon. Uh, but thank you all for playing. Thank you. Thank you for not killing us. <laughs> uh, not yet. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, if they, whew, if those priestesses had gotten a few things off, it would have been very, very different for you guys. Uh, look up <laughs> Feeble Mind sometime. Uh, look up Dominate Person. Uh, see see how those uh, would have gone, but you guys yeah, are, are bad. <laughs> yeah yeah. E- any of those would have been very very bad, uh, but you guys are just doing a great job. So uh, we'll see how great you do against a god. Uh, and until that until that uh, battle comes, we will roll with you soon. Mm-hmm.